So what does make a town or city beautiful anyway? I'm addressing this question out of a sense of urgency, and that urgency stems from something that right now is threatening to usurp the soul of our very humanity, AI. Now, maybe you think I'm being hyperbolic, and perhaps I am, but hear me out. Not long ago, an article was published by a well-known British online newspaper, and it reads as follows. A team of mathematicians has named Chester in England to be the prettiest city in the world, beating Venice, Italy in second place. The study used Google Street View to assess cities in both the UK and across the world and ranked them based on which had the highest percentage of buildings adhering to the golden ratio. It used Google Street View to assess... No. 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 So, in other words, they were able to determine, without even visiting Chester in person, that it is the most beautiful city in the world. Now, to be clear, Chester is lovely, especially the part within the city walls, but the prettiest city on earth, that's a bit of a stretch. But wait, you might be asking, who are you anyway? And why are you poo-pooing Chester? Well, firstly, it's not about Chester, it's about the deeper implication. As for me, Well, for the last four years, I've dedicated myself to touring as many towns and cities of the UK as I can, and having clocked up over 400 so far, I feel a responsibility to give my take on the question, admittedly with a British slant, but equally applicable worldwide. But what is the question again? Well, it's what determines our future, whether we relinquish everything that comes with being human over to the artificial intelligence algorithms and let them decide what art we consume, or whether we stand up for creativity, expression, heart, and soul. So let me give you my answer to what makes a town or city beautiful. Let's start with nature. The former three Michelin star chef Marco Pierre White once said, Mother Nature is the true artist. That's as true for cooking as it is for geography. Who wouldn't agree that a national park is beautiful, for instance? But we're talking about towns here, and with population centres comes a trade-off. How do you showcase nature while accommodating thousands of people residentially, industrially, and commercially? Well, take bodies of water, for instance. Since the beginning of civilization, great settlements have formed around rivers, These usually provide the best skyline focal points, whether it be a quaint town close to the source, an industrial town or city near the mouth, or a coastal town as it feeds into the sea. On the other hand, you have hills. These can provide spectacular panoramic views. The drawback is their lack of practical utility in an urban setting, though this does lend a certain mystique to the hilly towns. But what about the buildings? Well, the usual highlight of a town's architecture is its parish church, or indeed a cathedral in the case of a city. And you don't have to be religious to appreciate how a magnificent edifice can lift the spirit. A castle can do wonders for a town's aesthetic. The only problem is actually finding one that wasn't slighted by Cromwell, and special bonus points go to a town or city with walkable defensive walls. What, like Chester, Alex? Among others, yes. As for the other buildings, let's consider materials. For a historic aesthetic, there's nothing that quite compares to a house framed with timber. But not just any house, though. An authentic Tudor, or even medieval, building comes with a few tells. Not only the uneven beams, but also the jettied upper floors, which would have had them almost touching the buildings opposite back in the day. I'll grant that this didn't end well in some cases, but as far as the more fire-resistant materials go, there's one in particular that's remained supreme for about 800 years. Stone. Whether it's the perfectly cut ashlar stone, or the more rugged, fresh-from-the-quarry-looking variety, Nothing beats it for versatility, from its use in humble cottages to imposing castles. One key architectural trait is uniqueness. 
the prettiest streets tend to have one thing in common, that no two buildings are alike. Each one should have its own personality. Now, granted, the perfect Georgian crescent manages as a cluster, but the point still holds. And speaking of streets, there's something undeniably charming about cobbles, especially windy cobbles that defy the traditional schools of town planning thought. These provide a momentary step back in time to when each street was devoted to a particular trade. Bonus points apply when said trade is hinted at in the street name itself, be it of the butcher, the potter, or even the knifesmith. And the Chesterfield Street of Knifesmith Gate brings us neatly to crooked spires, and indeed other imperfections that weren't demolished, but rather were embraced as a symbol of a town's unique individual character, flying in the face of homogeneity, embraced by people who understand that beauty can't be boiled down to a single mathematical ratio. And the operative word is people, because a town centre is nothing if not for the people who have called it home at some point in its history. To that end, a good town or city will always honour its own, usually in the form of statues of its hometown heroes. Be it of a great king of old, a vice admiral, a prime minister who ended slavery on the quiet, a comedy legend, another comedy legend, a weaver of murder mysteries, a steeplejack, an inspiring manager, or a well-managed inspiration to billions. Not forgetting those whose lives were cut tragically short, be it from an unspeakable accident, or in the service of their country, so that we might enjoy our freedom today. Of course, no AI will ever shed a tear for these souls, but we, as humans, can surely recognise that a town centre holds so much more than a collection of buildings. It may be a place of cherished memories from hazy childhood innocence to school days we thought would last forever to bonding experiences with parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles to university towns and cities that opened our eyes to the country's vast history to first loves and to lost loves. Then there's the indescribable feeling of revisiting a town for the first time in years the lump in your throat when you first see the parish church on the skyline, or the moment you step off the train and register the local accent before your brain's even processed the words. And if you're local, the feeling of your own accent subtly shifting back into its old patterns, the banter of market day, or the camaraderie of match day, whether you're visiting friends or not, the town itself will feel like an old friend. And last but not least, the strangely reassuring feeling of walking alone, but being with company at the same time. For the very buildings around you have, for centuries, stayed loyally fixed to the ground and by your side, even if the people in your life haven't. These buildings will likely outlive us, just as they outlived our ancestors, effectively bringing us a closer bond with our predecessors, who, in many respects, were just like you and me. So that's my answer to what makes a town beautiful. Speaking as a human who entered this mortal plane via his mother's womb. But what say you, ChatGPT, Grok, and all the other robot pretenders out there? Are you going to solve beauty by scanning Google Street View and running algorithms? Or will you leave this question to those of us with a beating heart?